So this uh, presentation is um, deals with the uh, last uh, organ system of um, the type species Acidia. It is a reproductive system. So we have uh, gone through the digestive system, the uh, respiratory system, the blood vascular system, and uh, the nervous system, and finally uh, the reproductive system. Okay, um, Acidians are hermaphrodites. Okay, what are hermaphrodites? Hermaphrodites are those organisms which possess both male and female uh, uh, what you call the genital systems in the same organism. So uh, they, uh, each acidia consists of uh, an uh, ovary and a testis and uh, uh, these are uh, situated very close, uh, closely in the intestinal We will be seeing the figure later. And uh, from the ovary arises the oviduct and from the testis the sperm duct or otherwise it is known as the vas deferens. It arises from these organs and it moves up together towards the atrial cavity and open into the atrial ca cavity very close to the anus. So the oviduct and the sperm duct, it runs very close to the uh, intestinal re uh, region, that is the intestine and uh, it opens into the atrial ca cavity very close to the anal opening. Fine. Uh, even though uh, they are hermaphrodites, the um, gonads, they mature at different types, times. Okay. That means either it could be uh, protogyny or it could be protandry. Proto means, proto means first formed. Okay. Gyne uh, means you have learned in botany classes, isn't it? Gynesium and andresium. Gynesium refer to the female uh, part and andresium the male. So here it is protogyny, that is ovum matures earlier than the um, sperms. And uh, protandry refer to sperms developing earlier to the ova. So what happens is um, the cell fertilization is not possible since uh, uh, the individual ova and sperms mature or uh, does not mature simultaneously the um, cell fertilization is uh, not possible and hence cross fertilization is the rule and uh, for cross fertilization these gametes have to be released into the surrounding watery medium. So fertilization is external in the seawater. Okay. Now, these uh, fertilized uh, ovum, it develops into free-swimming um, tadpole-like, the frog tadpole-like larva. And hence, the tadpole, the larva is also known as acidian tadpole. And this um, egg hatches out into the um, tadpole in like 8 to 24 hours. It takes almost a day to uh, uh, complete the um, egg stage, right? So, we'll see the... Um, here you can see the um, um, what you call reproductive organs and uh, the duct passing along the uh, what you call intestine and opening very close to the anus into the atrial cavity. Okay, so uh, once the uh, ovum is released or the the gametes are released, okay, the gametes are produced. It passes through these duct, the ova through the oviduct and the sperm through the vas deferens. It passes into the atrial cavity. The atrial cavity contains water, so it is released into the water. And along with the expelled water through the atrial opening, it reaches the what you call the sea water. Okay, from the in there and there, the gamete is uh, gets fertilized by the gametes of the uh, of some other acidia. So that is how it happens. Okay, so the acidian tadpole, the structure. Uh, acidian tadpole. As already said, it is uh, almost like an um, amphibian uh, tadpole and hence it gets the name as a tadpole. It is almost like uh, 3 millimeters in length. It has an oval trunk and a long uh, laterally compressed uh, vibratile uh, tail. Okay, you can see over here, isn't it? In the figure you can see the head region is marked and the tail region. This is actually the uh, actual uh, acidian tadpole which is um, slide mounted and uh, stained uh, mounted okay so here you can see the head region which is uh, uh, what um, oval um, uh, uh, portion and uh, with a very long tail okay it is actually long laterally compressed tail vibratile in the sense very active during uh, the living time okay and the whole body is covered with a, the with a thin test or the tunic which we have already seen found in the adult isn't it now the uh, trunk uh, is the main part of the body of the larva. It bears adhesive papillae. Uh, adhesive papillae. Uh, we can see the, uh, the structure over here in the figure in the uh, um, like uh, diagram. 
so you can see on the trunk or sorry on the head region of the trunk it do have adhesive papillae at its anterior end you can it is the same mark three papillae are being found over there in the figure each papilla is formed of a group of secretory cells and these secrete sticky substance which helps in the attachment of the acidian tadpole okay so at the seed papilla the name itself says that it is a papilla like structure which do have at the seed function right and it is the it is because of the uh, what you call um, epidermal cells which are secretory in function and it secretes a sticky substance that uh, helps in attachment of the larva the tail of the larva you can see over here in the diagram it is fringed with a median flap like outgrowth of the test uh, in the sense um, there is a small uh, flap like structure along the median uh, uh, line okay and that forms a caudal fin okay this median flap like at the parent side parnattu medially parnattu oru oru portion form in the test okay you can see it is marked tail fin isn't it so uh, the test forms a median medially positioned uh, laterally compressed itella oru flap like structure is formed and that forms the Uh, what do you call it? tail fin or it is otherwise referred as the caudal fin and caudal fin is marked by uh, or, uh, oblique series of striations here you can see the tail fin do have the striations which is almost similar to the fin rays which is seen in the fishes malsingal kaanna polulla fin nammal malsingale varikkana samayath fins ingane vara varikkilla okay those are actually the fin rays okay so those uh, these are like um, see uh, the striations on the tail fin it looks very similar to the uh, the fin rays in the case of fishes okay then uh, you can see the uh, tail it contains a notochord and the nerve cord isn't it the tail uh, is in, in the along the longitudinal axis you can see uh, the notochord extends all along the tail and you remember the name uh, I mean, acidia it comes at the urocordata because the notochord is present in the tail portion or the tail region of the larva okay notochord is present only in the uh, in the tag, uh, in the larval stage isn't it and that is located in the tail region and that is why the name has come urocordata you refer, referring to the tail okay so here you can it is very clearly seen the notochord present in the tail region extending all along the Longitudinal length of the tail. Now, what are the other structures which we can see? No one is uh, the what do you call nerve cord, isn't it? The nervous system of the larva. Unlike the um, adult um, uh, nervous system which we have seen, that is, it is possessed. Uh, it is composed of a neural ganglia and a few nerves which arises from that, which forms the peripheral nervous system, isn't it? But here you can see they do have a very well developed nervous system, and the nervous system consists of a very long tu dorsal tubular nerve cord it is marked over there it is very long that is extending from the anterior region till the tip of the tail right and it has it can be differentiated into four parts right the initial one or the anterior one i'm sorry anterior part is known as a cerebral cone and then we can see the sense vesicle or it is written sensory vesicle labeled in the diagram sensory vesicle and then a visceral ganglia and a spinal cord okay so it can be differentiated into four parts that is the um, uh, what do you call them cerebral cord sensory vesicle uh, a visceral ganglion and a long spinal cord which extends along the tail okay cerebral cone is the uh, anterior most conical tip and it is formed of a solid mass of nerve cells okay while uh, sensory vesicle it is other even referred to by some uh, some others as cerebral vesicle sensory vesicle or the sense vesicle or the cerebral vesicle it is one and the same okay uh, uh, it is actually uh, an expansion of the nerve cord a pouch like expansion of the nerve cord and projecting into the cavity of the sensory vesicle from the from its wall you can see two sensory structures one is the otocyst uh, or the statocyst okay you will see what it is otocyst and another is an ocellus right so two sensory structures are seen associated with the sensory vesicle one is otocyst and the other is ocellus okay otocyst is otherwise known as statocyst the name indicates it is for equilibrium maintenance equilibrium or balancing right the second is ocellus a single ocellus 
ocellus or the eye spot is meant for it is actually the function is photo reception okay it cannot form images but obviously it can sense uh, the presence or absence of light okay so the sensory vesicle can be considered as the brain of the larva okay and following the uh, sensory vesicle is a, a thick area with a narrow lumen and this part is actually the uh, visceral ganglion or it is otherwise referred as a ganglion of the trunk right and this is followed by a long spinal cord which enters the caudal region and reaches the tip of the tail so these are the structures which are seen inside the um, um, uh, what do you call the acidian tadpole other than that which we are supposed to um, like uh, know about is the digestive system okay because the digestive system uh, uh, which is uh, seen in larva it is very different from what we have learned with respect to the adult digestive system here the digestive system of acidian tadpole is uh, well developed um, the, it consists of mouth um, here it consists of mouth then a large pharynx the pharynx is marked mouth it is you can see it is towards dorsal side of the um, at the seed papillae right the pharynx it, it, it is labeled pharynx contains pharyngeal heel slits it is also um, i mean drawn over there then endostyle is uh, present uh, inside the pharyngeal region a very small esophagus which uh, enters the stomach uh, then a lobed intestine you can see the intestine loops back and um, it opens to a sac like atrium okay the uh, you can see the space just beneath the uh, what called cerebral uh, region it is actually the uh, atrium okay it opens into an atrium and just below the pharynx uh, you can see the heart it is marked right very inconspicuous uh, it is and it is enclosed with a tubular pericardium it is almost similar to what is seen in an adult i hope all these structures are very clear you can just go through the structures once again the whole body can be divided into head and tail or trunk and tail the head region or the trunk region is composed of is uh, formed of uh, is actually a very uh, uh, like elaborate sac like structure and uh, it continues uh, towards um, i mean towards the posterior as a um, what do you call a very long um, laterally compressed structure which forms the tail region okay uh, in the trunk region you can see Three, uh, ad adhesive papillae at the anterior end, and this helps in uh, um, what you call secrete. It secretes adhesive substance which helps the, to the attachment of the larva, right? And in the uh, trunk region, what are the internal organs? One is the nerve cord, the to, um, what you call a dorsal long um, tubular nerve cord, and uh, the nerve cord is differentiated into the sensory vesicle and the spinal cord. The sensory vesicle contains sensor organs. Uh, the sensory structures autocyst as well as the ocellus right then in the trunk region you can see a very elaborate um, digestive system the digestive system is um, composed of mouth pharynx uh, short esophagus uh, stomach and a looping intestine which opens into the atrium right uh, then you have uh, what you call the notochord notochord is uh, restricted to the tail region and it extends all along the longitudinal axis of the tail right Uh, the whole body along the surface is covered by a test, and this test uh, in the tail region it is expanded to form a medium uh, compressed lobes like structure, and that is what forms the tail fin. Fine. So that is the structure of um, right. So here you can see the um, uh, nervous system, the anterior part of the nervous system in uh, detail. Right. You can see. The, um, the ocellus projecting into the lumen of the cerebral vesicle. So you can see the cerebral vesicle marked as sensory vesicle. Okay, it is actually a, a, a what do you call a, a vesicle or a pouch-like expansion inside the um, this one, the uh, cerebral cord. So here you can see two structures which are very important. One is ocellus, and another is the sensory the autosystem. Sorry. Okay, two structures found in the sensory vesicle. One is the um, what we call ocellus, and another is autosis. Ocellus it is meant for uh, photo reception, while the autosis is meant for balancing. Okay, right. Now we pass on to the uh, next part, that is the metamorphosis. That is what happens to the uh, this uh, um, tad larva, the cerebral tadpole, 
while it is getting transformed into the adult okay because it is entirely different what we can see as a uh, larva it is entirely different from the adult so during the transformation it has to undergo a lot of changes during the process and that transformation is often referred as metamorphosis which we have always studied as a and here what you can see is the metamorphosis is very unique so that is what we have to study now before we go into uh, the metamorphosis we just need to know about the importance of the ascidian tadpole with respect to the uh, studies undertaken on urocolies actually the anatomy of ascidian tadpole is only one which helped in revealing the chordate uh, uh, structure okay a chordate organization otherwise the uh, ascidians and the urocolies would have been placed in any invertebrate group because uh, either tasidian doesn't show any of the characters isn't it so what are the significant chordate features of ascidian tadpole listing a few first one it is a long postanal tail which we have seen postanal tail that uh, it is uh, with the tail finless and having medium dorsal and ventral fin folds secondly a supporting cylindrical notochord which extends all along the uh, longitudinal axis of the tail thirdly they do possess segmental muscle bands in the tail supported by muscle bands fourth that is pharynx is provided with pharyngeal gills and endostyle which we have already seen that endostyle is uh, later developing into uh, thyroid gland etc etc right then they have uh, ventral heart that is heart is located below the um, uh, 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 the alimentary canal isn't it uh, and it is uh, formed as a pericardial diverticulum okay in cushion now lastly they do possess a dorsal dorsally positioned tubular nerve cord with a uh, sense vesicle or sensory vesicle which can be considered as a primitive brain right so these are the characters unique to ascidian tadpole and these are the ones which help them uh, to be characterized sorry categorized under the uh, chordates right now regarding the metamorphosis Here, what happens is after a very short pre-swimming um, active life, the tadpole larva, it starts to uh, it settles down and undergo metamorphosis. Okay, and uh, what is happening is uh, like uh, the larva is non-feeding but actively swimming. Okay, so non-feeding, geo-negative, photo-positive, free-swimming larva gets transformed into geo-positive. Auto negative sedentary adult. I hope the whole thing is clear. Okay, uh, so uh, geo negative in the sense it is not getting uh, like it is not uh, sessile. It is not sedentary. It can move, so it is geo negative. Okay, photo positive with the help of the ocelli present. Ocelli present. It is sensitive to light. So uh, it 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 is uh, uh, it swims on the surface of water in daylight. So it is photo sensitive. Is it? It is photo positive. So later it becomes geo positive, uh, photo negative. um adult okay it is usually sedentary and settled down at the bottom of the uh, water body so it is away from the uh, light okay so it settles down to the bottom and attaches its to the substratum in a upside down posture with the help of the uh, the sea papillae okay so we will see how the metamorphosis take place okay so what all are the uh, changes which take place uh, and what are the changes which we have to actually note down Uh, during the metamorphosis uh, we will just see okay um from the um, what you call the larva uh, the metamorphosis uh, uh, consists of disappearance of many structures right disappearance of structures those especially those structures which are the important chordate features right the first one the regression and disappearance of postanality right secondly the notochord the caudal part of the no nerve cord because posterior tail gets disappeared it is re completely regressed so whatever structures were associated with the posterior tail like notochord then nerve cord present the part of the nerve cord which is present in the tail then muscle bands of the tail all those gets disintegrated and dissociated right then cerebral vesicle ocellus and statosis it disappears why so ocellus and statosis are of no use for a sedentary uh, sedentary or organism is in the balancing and the spot is sensitive it is sedentary it is getting attached to it. so it doesn't it, so it is completely lost similarly one adhesive papillae was meant for secreting adhesive um, substances for attach for helping the larva to attach onto the substratum isn't it and that is done during the first part of the 
metamorphosis. So the moving, free moving larva, it attaches onto some substratum with the help of the adhesive papillae. Okay, so once that is uh, the whole process, over, it disappears. So that is the third up and then a few structures which are lost during the metamorphosis. Right now, what are the other changes which we can see? Uh, visceral ganglion that is a part posterior to the uh, the sensory vesicle. It reduces in size to form the neural ganglion and the subneural gland. I hope you remember neural gland is the uh, is a part which actually represents the nervous system in the case of adult. And what was the function of subneural gland? Subneural gland was believed to have excretory function. Right now, uh, coming to the pharyngeal region, the pharynx in the uh, larva it was not so elaborate and enlarged. So during the metamorphosis, it becomes enlarged and more number of gill slits are formed in the branchial sac and to, uh, form, uh, to develop into the full-fledged uh, branchial sac of the pharynx in the adult, right? And together, gonads and gonodets are developed completely anew. Then uh, test, uh, there was only, uh, you can see, um, test, uh, it invaginates to form the branchial and the atrial siphon around the mouth and the uh, um, atrial opposite. Now, part of the body uh, between point of attachment and the mouth, it grows rapidly. Okay. And it causes uh, rotation of the body. So, uh, how the shape is comes, we will be seeing the figure. Then it will be very clear to you. Okay. And um, uh, we can see that in the case of uh, larva, it was bilaterally symmetrical. Bilaterally symmetrical because of the presence of the uh, paired uh, muscle bands, then uh, the uh, what called fin folds, the all those structures it gave actually a bilateral symmetry to the larva. But when it gets transformed or metamorphosed into the adult, that kind of a symmetry is lost, right? So now we can see how the metamorphosis. What are the different steps in the metamorphosis? Okay, so this is the adult which we have already seen the structure, it is uh, sedentary, it is attached to the substratum and uh, it produces, um, uh, since it is hermaphrodite, they produce both uh, the kinds of gametes, but obviously the fertilization is not cell, uh, uh, cell fertilization, just cross fertilization and it is external and during, after the fertilization is completed, the zygote, it later develops into acidian tadpole, isn't it, the larval stage. This acidian tadpole, it gets settled onto some substrate. Okay, so this is what happens. So, um, this larva, it settles down to the bottom of the water body, attaches itself to the substratum in an upside down posture. Upside down posture means anterior end is uh, closer to the substratum, right? With the help of the adhesive papilla, it attaches to the substratum. And in the figure, you can see the tail is projecting up. Isn't it? So, uh, with the help of uh, the seed papilla, it attaches to the substratum. Fine. And during this pr uh, process, uh, during this uh, what you call stage, you can see the tail is degenerating. Along with that, the notochord is also degenerating. The paired muscles, uh, bands it is reducing. And uh, all those structures uh, uh, associated with the tail, it is degenerating. Right. So, this is uh, the uh, part at which it gets uh, like attached to. Then, it transforms into the next stage where the, uh, there is a, we already saw that um, during the um, uh, development or during the metamorphosis, what happens is uh, there is a um, uh, rotation of the body in a posterior dorsal direction, right? Uh, that is from the point of attachment of the body to the substratum, there is a, um, a constant increase in the or uh, increase in the uh, what you call size or in, uh, there is a constant growth of the that particular part disproportionate increase in the uh, growth of the part of the body so the portion of the body between the point of attachment and the oral aperture i suppose you can see where is the oral aperture okay so um, uh, the, uh, branchial aperture it is what is labeled over there right so uh, the portion of the body between the attachment of the body and the uh, oral aperture or the branchial aperture, it grows rapidly. That portion alone grows rapidly. And what happens is, this brings the body uh, or rotates the whole body in a posterior dorsal direction, almost at about 180 degree. And as a result of which, 
the bilateral symmetry of the larva is, larva is lost and the uh, oral and do, 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 the branchial and the atrial aperture is brought close to each other at the free distal end okay so in the uh, initial figure you can see uh, this one minute okay okay in the third figure you can see over the here that is left hand uh, uh, left side bottom figure you can see the um, atrial aperture and the uh, branchial aperture isn't it it is uh, along the side but during the metamorphosis what happens is the uh, bo the body part between the point of attachment and the branchial aperture it grows in size and as a result of which the branchial aperture along with the uh, what do you call atrial aperture is pushed towards the door the uh, uh, distal side and it comes to be placed on the free end okay while the uh, part which was attached it forms a um, what do you call the put region or the basal region right um, gradually what happens is the larva transforms completely in uh, concluding the um, Eurocordate uh, type species Acidia. Okay, so please, um, if you have any doubt, you can just uh, put a comment or uh, send me a uh, message. Uh, and uh, um, if you want the uh, PDF or the uh, MOOC copy, you can just uh, put it as an image, uh, as, a, as a comment or a message. Okay, so thank you.